I, I did the call last night as well. We had a little twelve-year-old girl from Wales, and I couldn't do any of the dirty jokes. I was rude. <laughs> <laughs> All of my jokes are a little bit saucy. <laughs> <laughs> Um, if you if you you will get to see some sessions while you're here in Ireland, I suppose. If you're in the Temple Bar area, most of the pubs you go into will have Irish music, the last and true PA system. But if you if you manage to get out and hear some decent music elsewhere, um, we see tons of instruments. Uh, fiddles are very very popular. Um, fiddles, flutes, banjos, guitars, bazookis, which is like Greek guitar, skinnier, um, mandolins, tin whistles. Uh, Ill pipes, all, all sorts of instruments, most of which we've brought from other countries and, and brought into our tradition, but three of which are native to Ireland. Um, the first one is our national symbol, and it's on the, it's on our, our money, it's on, it's on the back of all of our coins, it's the harp, uh, the old Irish harp. More importantly, it's, it's on the trunk of your Guinness. Um, <laughs> actually, the, the harp on your Guinness is the harp in its correct form and shape and direction. Uh, the one that's on the government is the flip side, it's the backwards of it, because Guinness copyrighted the harp symbol before our government came into existence. <laughs> and they wouldn't sell it to the government. Uh, actually, we don't mind because Guinness is more important than our government. <laughs> but uh, that's the harp, yeah, it's, it's considered, it's the national emblem, obviously, and it's considered, uh, it, it's not that common anymore. If I know 300 fiddle players, I might know five harps. Uh, but they're, they are still around. Um, there was a very famous guy called Sherlock O'Carroll, who would be regarded as Ireland's national composer. Uh, he was from the West, he was from Roscommon. But uh, he was he was very well regarded worldwide by composers. He called himself, his name is Sherlock O'Carroll, which is Sherlock is a real old Irish name. But uh, in England he was known as Carlin, which is Carlin. And uh, in mainland Europe he called himself Carlini. So he was a, a, a businessman. He, he, he was really well known, but he was a businessman. I suppose he made himself at the time. But he composed tunes and uh, one of his tunes. You, you won't really, you'll never hear an O'Carlin piece played in a session because I'll play one for you now in a second. But they're kind of, it's almost like classical music. It's very closely related to Baroque music. But uh, you'll hear them often played at weddings in Ireland. Uh, Often a bride will pick an old Carolyn piece to come up the aisle to, and they, they work really well, they're lovely. But the Chieftains also would have recorded lots of, um, they have that kind of chamber music feel. But um, I'll, play, I'll play one of those momentarily. I'll just tell you about the other two instruments that we have first. Um, the other are the Illum pipes. Illum pipes are an Irish version of the Scottish war pipes or the bagpipes that you're probably all familiar with, except you're actually able to listen to them. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the bagpipes, uh, they were, they're, they're called war pipes for a reason, they're, they're for rousing troops and going into battle. And, uh, if you hear one of those, not for making pretty music. No. I saw somebody on Facebook there this morning put something there in the airport, and there was a bagpiper in the airport this morning, and somebody said, far too early for bagpipes. Well, <laughs> <laughs> uh, the, Irish, the Irish ones are much quieter and uh, a much more complex instrument in a lot of ways. They're, they're called illin pipes. Illin is the Irish word for elbow, so elbow pipes. Um, so many reeds in them, doing so many different jobs that the, the air needs to be dry, and that's the reason why it's the air needs to be pumped with bellows. And the air is completely dry. Most other pipes uh, around the world are, are bellows are filled, or the bag is filled by the blowing it into your mouth. The other pipes need dry air, so you strap the bellows onto your arm. So this arm is pumping. As, as Anthony said, pipers are all mad. There's a couple of reasons for this because the instrument is incredibly difficult to play, it's really outrageously hard. Most most pipers tend to come from families of pipers, or I don't know any pipers who don't come from really musical families. The reason being that human pipes are really difficult to make, therefore, and they take a long time to make. Therefore, they're really expensive. I've got a decent set, a full set <coughs> of human pipes from a decent maker will cost anywhere from twelve thousand to twenty thousand euro, and take about ten years to make. There are practice sets you can get. They're still really hard to get, um, and they will cost about three, three thousand. And that's just for bellows, your bag, and a chanter. A chanter comes from the French word for sing, and the chanter from melodies played on. Pipers tend to be very complicated and have very short fuses because uh, they're, they're, you just uh, you just see them looking at these things going, why couldn't I play the fiddle? Or why couldn't I? <laughs> <laughs> they're you know. 
because your great granddaddy played them, your granddaddy played them, and your parents played them, you're going to play them whether you like it or not. But when you hear them, <laughs> if there's any instrument that I wish I could play other than the fiddle, it'd be the pipes because they're just, when you hear them played properly, they are absolutely incredible. They're amazing instruments. Eamon, although he's playing them properly. Oh, great, yeah. We'll tell you where you can hear a good, really good pipe later on. Later on. But, um, this, 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 so this arm is just pumping all the air, it's supposed to do a tube into the bag. Bag fills up. You then have to apply the right amount of pressure with your left hand to pump the air into the chamber. Apply the right of them. So it's here. Pumping with this arm. Applying pressure with this arm. Playing <laughs> <laughs> the melody on this arm. So it's, I don't know what it looks like here. Uh, and then if that wasn't if that wasn't hard enough, get three drones, a, a bass baritone on the Drum, the lie across, the, the Scottish bagpipes ones go up over your shoulder, the Ilan pipes sit, sit on your lap here, and they all need to be tuned, and when they're switched on, you'll hear the big and then melodies play the chanting. So when drones are on, you need much more air, so you'll see them struggling to really fill the bag to get the air, enough air to fill the drones. And if that wasn't hard enough, you have three regulators, but this is what kind of makes the Irish pipes unique. There's three regulators, the bass, baritone, and tenor regulator, and you're kind of saying to yourself, if this arm is pumping the air, and this arm is applying the right amount of pressure to play, and you're using all of your fingers to play the melody and the chant, what the hell are you going to do with those things? They play with your head. So you keep them. You'll see them, and when, when, when you hear them play properly, they play with this part of your wrist. There's, there's four sets of buttons on it. If they're played straight across, they, they all make chords, so it'll be DFA or DGB or whatever. So you'll see players hitting the three of them when they're playing the G, but hit the the G chord. So it gives a full G chord along with the full melody. You'll often see them as well playing individual, if they're playing the melody momentarily with one hand, you'll see them picking off notes on the regulators, and that's really outrageous. Like so, so complex when you think about it. Uh, that's the other place. Um, so if you're not mad when you start playing them, you will go mad. <laughs> <laughs> it is a bit like tapping your head, rubbing your tummy, and doing the knitting with your toes. I'm <laughs> taking a point. Uh, yeah. The women tend that they not they don't go as mad. Girl players tend to be a little bit more sane. There are too many female. There players. aren't that many, but I know a couple. But they're they're rare. But they do tend to keep sane for a longer period because they've had that whole multitasking thing down. <laughs> so you'll see pipers, girl pipers, for example, playing the pipes while driving the kids to school. <laughs> <laughs> on the mobile phone. Put the lipstick on in the mirror as well. <laughs> no problem. There was an organisation actually set up in the 60s called the Pipers Club in the Hebrew, Illin and Irish. Uh, and they're doing great work at the moment. Uh, there's a lot of unemployed people in Ireland at the moment. And they are, they start, they built a factory out in Coolock on the north side of Dublin. And they're teaching unemployed carpenters how to make the pipes. Uh, practice sets that will be given to schools and we'll get kids, give kids access to any pipes. And that was just, it's a great come back, idea. come back in 10 years time, you won't be able to walk down the street. <laughs> but it's great. Uh, the last instrument then that we haven't mentioned is the Bowerong. Um, it's the Bowerong. This is a dead animal wrapped around a piece of wood and you hit it with a stick to make noise. <laughs> bower, bower in Irish means death. So essentially it means deafener. Um, Bowerongs have a, I have a funny relationship. Most musicians have a funny relationship with Bowerong players. Hey. Because we have. <laughs> uh, the thing about the Bowerong is anybody can pick up a Bowerong. If you go into a Carol's or any gift shop, You'll see barons on the wall with Guinness written on them and Celtic art, you know, stuff from the Book of Kells painted on it. You can buy one for 20 quid and walk in, walk straight into a session, sit down, beat the crap out of it. And some people think, you know, this is me playing Irish music. And, uh, it's a bit like going into an orchestra with a triangle and saying, hey, triangle. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but there are some amazing baron players, and I suppose the baron was kind of brought in. A guy called Sean O'Reilly, who uh, put together a group. From Cork, he was a musicologist and music lecturer, and uh, it was him originally that kind of took Irish music out of the dance halls and, and, and onto the stage. He, uh, he was fascinated by Irish music. He didn't really play it. He could play the baron. He played the piano. He played classical music, but he was fascinated by Irish music, and he decided to uh, gather together some of the best trad players in the country, uh, put a shirt behind them, and uh, he booked the Gaiety Theatre for a night. He booked the Gaiety Theatre for a night, which is one of the biggest theatres in, in the country. And uh, we made kind of all clean shaven and kind of arranged the music into sets of tunes and made sure they played reels, jigs, waltzes, hornpipes, all kinds of different music. And it went, it was an absolute rage and success. And uh, 
they started doing tours and everything and changed their name for the Chieftains. So that's how the Chieftains came about. But I mean, Sean O'Reilly was responsible for kind of taking the music up the dance halls, putting it on the stage, and people kind of step back and say, wow, the, the music is really amazing in its own right and deserves like, all the recognition it gets. Really. But uh, he was a barrel player, so he kind of ended up hit. I do a bit of barrel, I, I play the barrel. Uh, and it does, it takes 20 minutes to learn how to play the barrel. Uh, we have 20 years to know when to stop playing. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to do this too, we'll run out of time. We're going to leave in about 10 minutes or so, so um, speed up or slow down here. If you've waited that long,